So with Sly and Welsh, I want to kind of get uh, under the hood of mortgage interest rates so you understand a little bit more about how mortgage rates are priced and what's going on in the trends right now and why the mortgage rates are going up and what you might expect to see next. So uh, it's not commonly understood, but the 10-year treasury issued by the federal government is the index that really helps the overall market to price mortgage securities. And the reason for that is though all, you're getting a mortgage that has a fixed term for 30 years. The vast majority of the people don't stay in their house that long. Most people stay in their house closer to 10 to 12 years. So that's why the 10-year rate is so influential for mortgage prices. And as you probably have noticed, and there's a graph here to be able to illustrate this, the 10-year price has gone up quite a lot over the last four to six weeks. So you're gonna start seeing some increases in the mortgage rates as well. But there's one more thing that's also really important, and that's called the spread. And the spread is just the gap between the 10-year treasury and then what's the prevailing mortgage rate right now. So I'm gonna just make the math really easy. If the 10-year was at 1% and the mortgage rates were at 3%, the spread would be 2%. And they multiply that by 100 to get something called a basis point or a BIP. And uh, so 200, uh, 2% times 100 would be a 200 basis point spread. So if you ever are reading the Wall Street Journal or watching a financial article on the news and they, they talk about BIPs or you know, basis points, that's what they mean by that. So traditionally, there's about 160 basis points spread between what the 10-year treasury is at and what the mortgage rate is at. So as the mortgage rate, uh, as the treasury rate goes up, the mortgage rate will go up by the same amount. So we've got a chart on here showing what the spread has been historically. Long term, it's about 160 basis points, but you can see that it got extremely high last year. And the reason for that is the mortgage, I'm sorry, the 10 year treasury rate fell to an all time low. For one point, it was like actually at like a half a percent, just weirdly low. And now it's like at 1.2, so it's gone up 70 basis points since then. The lenders could have reduced the mortgage rates even more than they did, but they chose not to. So basically all the overhead costs of making a mortgage and all the profit for the mortgage broker comes out of that 160 basis point spread. So last summer, the banks were minting cash writing mortgages, it was incredible. So you can see lately on the chart that the spread has been coming down closer to the historical norm of 160. So the implication for us is that as the 10-year treasury has been going up, the banks have been eating all of this price increase for us as consumers because their profits had been so high. But you can now see that the bank's profit margin is down to 160, which is their historical average. They won't be able to sustain any more increases on their source of money. Any further increases that come, they're gonna to have to pass along in the form of higher mortgage rates. And we're just now starting to see that in the last two weeks. So if you've wondered why, the rates have been stable and all of a sudden they jumped. That's the real reason why. So what's gonna happen next? Uh, well, if we end up passing 1.9 trillion of aid to the economy as is anticipated, I expect that people will think on Wall Street there's gonna be more inflation and that that 10-year treasury will continue to go up and that means mortgage rates will go up as well. So if you're thinking about buying, it would be a really great idea to try to accelerate your plans, do it a little sooner, lock in these low rates while you can while they're still here. Uh, if you're waiting for the lowest possible rates, that train has probably already left the station.